is our vision? Who memorized our vision? Already our third week. You should memorize our vision. Okay. To be a loving church, expressing life. Last week, we learned about expressing our life. We would like to live our life to the fullest. We, would don't, we don't want to live just a mediocre life, an ordinary life. As a Christian, as a child of God, we would like to be a child of God, living life to the fullest. Because Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Please, abundant means that's just mean abundance in money or prosperity but in all areas of your life spiritually emotionally god wanted us to enjoy life to the fullest and in this church we express our lives to the fullest by expressing life life is l-i-f-e through learning the word of god through intimacy with god through fellowship with brothers and sisters and through evangelizing people you have that kind of mission. You have that kind of life. That's a very perfect life. You don't just exist here in this world just to eat, just to earn money, just to make a living. You were planted in this world to express life, learning God, being intimate with Him, fellowshipping with brothers and sisters, and reaching out to the people and bringing them the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's our brief summary of our last two Sunday sermons. So today we are going to talk about the disciple people. Okay. So again, I'd like to give you all the four things. First part is loving. Third, second part is living. And now on the third line, disciple people. We are going to lead. We are going to lead. That's our vision to lead people. Right. So, to lead people simply means to disciple people. To disciple people means to teach them, to, to learn, to, to teach them to know more about Jesus. Disciple from the Greek word patetes means learner. When you are a disciple, then you are a learner. Learner of what? Learner of the Word of God. Okay? So, when you lead people to learn more about Jesus, the end result of that is for that person become like Christ. So to disciple people is to lead people. And to lead people is to know, for them to know more about Christ and to become like Christ. And I would like to entitle the message today is to become like Christ. Become like Christ. Tell yourself, not the person next to you, to become like Christ. So that's the third point of our vision. Be a loving church, expressing life to disciple people. Disciple means to lead. Disciple means to teach. Disciple means to lead people to Christ. In order for them to become like Christ. In order for someone to lead another person to Jesus, this person should also be led by Jesus himself in order for him to be qualified as a disciple who will disciple others in order for them to become like Christ. So Jesus is our teacher, the best teacher. He's going to teach us in order for us to be able to teach others. Who could teach others about the word of God? You are not yet confident to teach others with the word of God. Listen to the teacher. Jesus himself is our great teacher. Okay. 
So there are many teachers or leaders of things who would promise you, come and follow me and we are going to advance, we are going to conquer, you are going to have prosperity, you are going to gain this, you are going to have this. Those are the promises today by great leaders. There's nothing wrong about that. But listen to the promise of Jesus. This is our main text for today from Luke 9, 21 to 27. In verse 21, this is what Jesus said. Strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. He said, the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? Jesus was referring to himself. Jesus, the Son of Man, must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed. If someone would turn up to you and show up, show up to you and they say, come on, follow me, and I'll be killed, and I would suffer. Would you follow this person? Would you follow this teacher? Oh, 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 I don't want to follow this person. He would be killed. He would suffer. Of course, he would, he would be my teacher. I would also suffer. I would also, I might also be killed. See the difference? This message might be uh, strong to many today. Because we are used to messages such as God's love, He comforts you, He cares for you, He would take care of your he is loving. You would prosper. Yes, those are things we could get from God and Jesus. But there are also messages such as this that would tackle about hard teaching of Jesus Christ about hardship. Okay? So, but there is hope. And on the third day, he raised life. Sometimes the word of God is tough, hard to swallow, but there's always hope in the word of God. The word of God is alive like a double-edged sword. It will penetrate even the divine soul and spirit, joins the mind, and it judges the mind to your heart and to say the word of God fears your heart, hurts you, but Hurts. All right? So becoming like Christ. How to become like Christ? Who wants to become like Christ? I don't know which you I want to become like Christ. It's the very purpose why God the Father sent His Son Jesus Christ in this world in order for us to see the true human. And the true human is Jesus Christ. You can, know, you can never see the true human from other person. The true human can only see, will only be seen through Jesus Christ. He is the perfect human being. He was the example of the perfect human being when he came down to the earth and became flesh. He walked in this world to exemplify the true human being. And the purpose of that is for all of us to become like Christ. And if you want to become like Christ, if you want to become his disciple, this is what he said in Luke 9, 9 23. Then he said to them, all, whoever, whoever, this is for everybody who has the desire, whoever, if you have the desire to become like Christ, to be his follower, to become, to become his disciple, Whoever you are, whoever wants to be my disciple, must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. There's no more. There's nothing I could add to that. That's, it. That's how we should live our lives as Christians. Denying ourselves, Taking up our cross and following Jesus. And I would like to start with denying yourself. So, in order for you to lead others, you have to lead your first. You have to lead yourself first. We cannot lead other people if we cannot lead our own selves. 
Yes, the church and vision. To lead people, to disciple people. We have to lead ourselves first. We want to lead others. First is lead yourself by denying yourself. So what's that? Pastor you mean to say that I should no longer live, I should no longer think by myself, I should no longer uh, do the things that I want because I need to deny myself. Yeah, that's what you think. But let me clarify this. Lead yourself, deny yourself. This means to say, know something. Know things that God doesn't approve. This doesn't mean to deny yourself from living. And you no longer have the right to think. You no, longer have, you no longer have the right to live for yourself. But this verse just tells us that we live for have to be for Christ. Galatians 2.20. I think Joe quoted this a while ago. I have been crucified in Christ and I no longer live. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you no longer live, but Christ lives in you because your old self died and Jesus Christ lives in you. Therefore, the life I now live in the body, sorry, uh, yeah, the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And so you have to deny things that you used to do when you were, you are in your old self. Your old self, this is what our old self, old self says. For it's from within our person's heart. You know what's the inclination of our hearts? This is the inclination of our old self, our first, the person, your, your heart, when you, you're, you're not yet in Christ. That evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. Ouch, that's the reality, that's the truth, that we people, when we don't have the knowledge of Christ, we have this inclination. I could say, yes, I like. I was like that when I was I was still in the world. I have my heart's inclination. Let's go for all these things. That's not to murder. I haven't murdered someone. But that's the inclination of our fallen nature our heart so my flesh wanted to do these things but I had to deny these things not but my heart wants to retaliate but I have to deny it everything that has come from God you have to deny it now start Pause for a while. And let's think of those things that we need to deny. Things that are not pleasing in the eyes. Because you would like to become like Christ. What would Jesus do if Jesus is in your situation? How would you face your boss, your spouse, your kids, in your situation like right How would Jesus? Deny yourself. Jesus Christ Himself said, Not my will, but yours. I know this topic is so hard because this is true, Christianity. Yes, this is true, Christianity. Deny yourself. Really like to follow Jesus, you have to deny 
happens in your life. That's why many Christians, they get easily tired, they get easily discouraged, and they get easily bored. So they thought Christianity is a process. It's not. It's what Christ said. In this world, you shall have tribulation. In this world, you shall have hard hardship. Let's understand what Jesus Christ went through when he walked in this world. And Jesus Christ said, follow me. So Christianity is not just a process. Praise God, there's always hope. There's always the grace that will carry us. Denying ourselves is not that easy because we would like to be in the top position. We would like to have that and those things, but sometimes those things are not good for you. Therefore, you have to deny it. Jesus himself did want to die on the cross. Lord, can you take this cup out from me? This hardship, this pain that I'm experiencing when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Of course, he would like to do the will of the Father. Right, Father? Not my will. But your will be done. That's our prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. If you know how to pray that prayer, therefore, you know how to deny yourself. Deny yourself, meaning you are submitting, you are submitting, you are surrendering your life to God fully. But don't be afraid to surrender and submit your life to the God who created the heavens and the earth. He knows you. He knows what's going to happen, your past, present, and future. If you know the word of God, therefore you should not be afraid of surrendering your life to Jesus. Deny yourself, your flesh wanted. Something else, but God has a better plan. You have to deny yourself from such things, these things. If your heart still inclined to this, Nine years. Your heart wanted to sleep more time, but it's good for you to get up early in the morning to read your Bible, to pray. Then deny yourself of too long sleep. Sometimes our patience. Are you still there? Yeah, you're still there. Yeah. Mr. Jun, is that the way to live Christianity? Yes! Not only that, you have to take up your cross. The second point, carry your cross. You would like to lead others. You have to lead yourself first in carrying your cross. Some would say that this cross is your uh, your naughty child or mean boss or bully classmate or your sickness. No, uh, we cannot really uh, interpret that way. Let's say, oh, my pastor, my, my cross is my husband, my wife, my work, or my sickness. We cannot say that because cross during the time when Jesus Christ carried this cross, he meant about these four things. It is the symbol of pain, shame, opposition, and death. Right? But others would like to interpret as their problem, as their pain, as their perennial suffering. But we cannot interpret it that way. But this is the symbol you see a cross during that time means shame someone who's carrying it. You know what? Jesus Christ suffered on that cross. 
And every day, He reminded us to carry your cross day. What? Should I take up the wood and carry it every day? Going to school, going to, to my uh, workplace? Is the reason why many people back in the Philippines carry their cross. Literally, a wooden cross. Christ did uh, say that thing. He meant that uh, this cross is something we should carry every day of life. That was the, the interpretation of Jesus Christ. When he said that carry your cross, literally a wooden cross, you should be carrying it every day. But Jesus Christ meant that way. Take up your cross. Just take your life to Jesus. Surrendering to Jesus daily. In the Bible, in the time of Jesus, the cross was the most shameful or the most shameful act. You are a criminal, you are a, a, the worst criminal. If the Roman government would ask you to carry a cross and you would be crucified, a person hung on it naked and you would be so tired until you collapse, until you are suffocated to death. It's so hard to be in that situation. But today, we can have pain when you follow Jesus. Oh, Pastor, there you are again. Yeah, but this is the reality. Sometimes when you follow Jesus, you will experience pain. Are you ready? to carry your cross? Are you ready to carry your pain? When you experience pain, when you follow Jesus, continue carrying it. Don't give up. Continue to carry that pain until you reach the mountain where Jesus Christ was crucified. What pain you are experiencing right now because of your obedience. Sometimes our obedience not necessarily would lead us to prosperity. Sometimes it would lead us to pain. Jesus Christ, he just followed and obeyed the will of the Father. But what happened to Jesus when he obeyed the Father? He was just crucified. He was just beaten. He just suffered. Sometimes when you obey, you experience pain. Take heart. You're not alone. Jesus Christ Himself. Paul, Peter, Moses, David. There's hope. But you have to carry it daily. You have to persevere carrying the cross daily. Not only that, sometimes when you obey Jesus, it would bring shame. Ah, you're born again, you're a Christian. Sometimes you have to carry no shame. Again, Christianity is not just a bad process. I'm telling you this because I love you. You need to know this. Christianity is not just fun. But we could also experience this cross symbol of opposition. Oppose Jesus. Sometimes when you follow and you obey Jesus, you would experience opposition. I just follow Jesus and here you are. There's so many people trying to oppose me. Just because you're up against the tide. If you are up against the norm, expect opposition. If you're doing something good, something great, that is pleasing to the eyes of the Lord, expect the enemy. 
call all his cohorts to oppose you. Expect opposition. Again, do not give up. Carry that cross. Carry it. Jesus Christ said, take up their cross daily. You would like to follow Jesus. Carry your cross. And fourth, you would like to carry your cross? Then, you have to be ready. That. <gasps> Mind you, there are many Christians being martyred all over the world. Perhaps you are not called to be martyred. Oh, thank you, Lord. Sometimes, there are people called to be martyred. That's you. But what I would like to tell you here about them is Jesus Christ already died for all your sins. He died for your sexual immorality, for your drunkenness, He died for your pride, He died for your sins, past, present, and future, but you have to remind yourself that you already died from your old self. Okay. The old June has died. The, new, the, the June that you see right here in front of you is the new June. The June that used to lead people to cut classes, to go to the bar, the June to use to smoke, we used to watch filthy films. Betamax, you know that? <laughs> Nobody knows about Betamax. And you say Betamax during our time. It's a, it's a no good. Normally, it's a. <laughs> you don't know, you don't want to hear the details of it. You know? The old tune has died. You have to remind yourself. Every day, oh, died already from that sin. I had to deny it. I had to deny it. You already died. The old you has gone. If you're claiming to be born again, to be a Christian, therefore, you have to remind yourself every day that, that part of you has died already. I died when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. It's no longer me who lives, but Jesus who lives in me. I have to carry my cross. I have died already on that area. I don't need to do it again. I'm going to deny it. Deny, deny, deny. Are you ready to die on your pride, on your selfish ambition? In a wrong friendship or even wrong relationship. You have to put all those things to death. Carry your cross. Thirdly, of course, follow me. This is Christ said. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Simply follow Jesus by faith. When you receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ lives in you. you simply follow what Jesus Christ tells you in His Word. Whatever the Word says, trust and obey. I would like to repeat this again. You hear the Word of God, trust and obey. Obey and leave all the consequences to him. What if, Pastor the but no but no ifs, no what ifs. If you heard the word of God, you would like to follow him, therefore obey. Trust him and obey. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. If you are afraid that you might be that your life will be destroyed or will become or we'll be in danger if by following the word of God. Let this word of God 
encourage you by knowing that whoever follows Jesus will never walk in darkness. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the light. You will never walk in darkness. We are afraid to walk in the darkness because we might stumble. You are walking in obedience to Christ. You are walking in the light. To follow Christ is to do His will. You want to like become Christ? Therefore, you have to obey His will. If you're not following Christ, then you're following your old self. Yes. If you're not following Christ, you are following your old self. What is the inclination of our old self? Our heart? Evil thoughts, that's what the Bible says. Therefore, deny yourself, follow the cross, carry your cross, then follow Christ. You know what, church? Matthew started teaching, uh, Matthew mentioned in Matthew 5 about Jesus teaching the disciples in Matthew 5. That's when Jesus Christ taught his disciples, Jesus taught his disciples about his teaching. From Matthew 5 to Matthew 28, that's where Jesus exemplified how to live life as a true human being. And in Matthew 28, on the last verses, this is what he said to his disciples. In Matthew 5, he said, God, Jesus gathered his disciples and he teaches them his teachings. In Matthew 28, this is what he said to his disciples. This is what he said. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. After he taught his disciples how to live, after he led his disciples, now he taught his disciples how to disciple. So therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. So it is making a disciple. First, Jesus made us his disciples in order for us to disciple others. Jesus led us that we may be able to lead others. And it's our church vision, not just to be a loving church, not just to live life to the fullest, but we would like people to be led to Christ in order for them to experience as well what you're experiencing in Christ. Yes, there might be some suffering, struggles, trials, but you could attest to it. But you could attest to it that you, you are not forsaken. God is always there. We would like to share that to other people. They too experience the of life. So three things that we may lead others. Go, baptizing, and teaching. Go means we should be intentional. We should be intentional. People would all turn up here on Sunday. Oh, is this a church like expressions? Can I be a born again here? I would like to be prayed for. No, it's seldom you could find someone who would turn up here and ask you to share Christ to him or her. We should be intentional as people of God, as Christians. We have to be intentional in inviting people and sharing the Word of God to them. We don't know how to share the Word of God to them because your lack of knowledge on, the, on Scripture, bring them to your small group or let them come to the church and so that they would hear the Word of God and someone would pray for them. We should be intentional. We should go. Go to our workplace, to marketplace, to our schools, go to our neighbors. We should be intentional. We would like to become like Christ who was in, intentional in, in, in sharing the word of God, in leading people to God. We should be intentional like Christ. 
go, not only going, not, be, not just becoming intentional in inviting people and reaching out to people, we should baptize them. Baptize them means to say, we have to lead them to surrender. Because baptism is a sign of surrender. Baptism here is water baptism. Okay? Water baptism, it is when you be immersed in water in order for you to proclaim to the world that you are a follower of Christ. And when someone would go, would undergo the thing, he's proclaiming or she's proclaiming that she is or he is a follower of Christ. And that's what we would like to, that's what we would like to do to the people whom we are going to bring to Christ. That they would become water baptized. Because when they become water baptized, they are proclaiming to the world, I am a follower of Christ. And that's what we want. We would like them to follow Christ. And thirdly, we would like to lead other people. We need to teach them the word of God. So, going, baptizing them in water, meaning to say, helping them to surrender fully to God, and teaching them the Word of God. The Word of God is so important here. Without the Word of God, that person whom you're leading to Christ will never grow. We have to teach them the Word of God. You want to become like Christ? Had to lead yourself to follow Christ and lead someone to follow Christ as well. In order for them to follow Christ, you have to go. You have to baptize them, baptize them in water, and you have to teach them the word of God. The word of God is very important. It is our bread in order for us to grow. wants to save their life will lose it. You know what, church? I know what you think. Many of you might be thinking about it. so hard because, you know, it's true. People, you want to have a good life. We would like to have a comfortable life. A life that is free from danger, free from any pain, free from any sickness. Those things are good, but the truth is, we experience things in this world that sometimes not good. Whoever wants to save their life, most of us, we would like to save our lives. To the point that we become so selfish, to the point that we don't want to reach out to others because we are so comfortable and we would like to just focus on our own lives. But you would lose your life for the sake of Jesus. You will save it. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me, who's me, Jesus. You're going to surrender, give, deny yourself, your life to Jesus. You will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? We are so busy acquiring things for our own life, for our own selves, that we miss the very essence and purpose of our of God in our lives. And we are going to forfeit our soul, our own our own self. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the son of the son of man will be ashamed of them. If you are not ashamed of the word of God, therefore you have to obey the word of God. But if you are ashamed of the word of God, then it's tantamount that you are ashamed of the Son. Therefore, if you are not afraid, if you are not ashamed of the Word of God, you have to obey it. We have to obey it. And by works, and the Son of Man will not be ashamed of them when He comes and His glory and the glory of the Father and the Holy Angels. And when He says, Come, he will not be ashamed of you. 
He will be proud of you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. And lastly, truly, I tell you, some of you who are standing here will not face death before they see the kingdom of God. Who are these people? They are the disciples. They are the followers. They are the ones who are not ashamed of God's prayer. They are the ones who are not ashamed of Jesus, about Jesus Christ. You may, you may be experiencing something painful, or perhaps you are suffering with something right now because of your obedience. Sometimes you <coughs> make the question, yeah, Lord, I just obeyed you. I just followed you, Lord. Why do I need to experience all these things, all these sufferings? says to us. Sometimes we have to really, we really have to experience those things. This is the, this is the confidence that we have. Your suffering is not worth comparing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. suffering right now suffering the glory will be revealed in you I don't know when will that be maybe tomorrow or next week or maybe when Jesus comes that's one thing I will assure you your present suffering is the word of very glory You know what? In Revelation 21, 4, I quoted this maybe two months ago. There's so, so worried about our lives. We tend to miss the very essence of why we are living in this earth. Actually, all the things that we are experiencing right now is just our preparation for our life with God. How long would you live in this world? Say 80 years old? Or say 90? Come on. 100? How long would you live in eternity? How long? How long? I just attended a funeral the other day. They say, life is so short. Yes, indeed, life is so short. You're just having fun at the beach, all of a sudden, you kill from your eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the older for the old order of things has passed away you know what what we are experiencing right now in following Christ is not worth comparing to what God has in store for you like Christ every day of your life every time you deny yourself with things of this world you are becoming becoming like Christ every time you carry your cross every day of your life you are becoming and becoming becoming like Christ every time you follow Jesus you are becoming like Christ and that's the very reason why Jesus Christ came to earth that's the very reason why he discipled Matthew all and all his disciples in order for them to become like him 
Not once. Gold people. Come to him. Come. Um.